It's your boy Noble Wood. Twice up, I'm the down. The truth is hard to swallow like. When you eat in the food, go down the road. Cut your eyes tearing up like, please give me the highlight. Maneuver your hearts in your ears so you can receive the dust of truth that we're trying to bring to thee. Cry it loud, spare not. Lift up voice like a trumpet. This is a full course. We'll put down and see it. Crumpets and cry your ears. Listen up as we break bread with you. As we present to you the gospel truth. Hello YouTube, it's your girl April Ross with the Gospel Truth. Today's Friday and this is like in the afternoon. I'm just now recording so prayerfully y'all will have this video up uh, loaded by this evening. Um, I've been praying and asking God um, what he's been wanting me to do. Uh, my all-in-one, my desktop computer broke on me and so I lost a lot of my videos so I'm having to start over with a Bible study and it was and a lot of times things like this happen for a reason and so um, God just told me that from here on out I just need to just break down the Word of God we're gonna begin in the book of John we're gonna study the whole book of John we're gonna break down each chapter um, I'm not saying daily but whenever I'm led to do it so keep me in your prayers keep me lifted up um, in your prayers um, so, and chapter 1 is pretty lengthy, so we're going to go to the book of John, the gospel according to John. And as I always read um, the Amplified Version, I just like it better uh, for those who don't know or who has never picked up the Bible. Um, so they can get a better understanding of what God is saying. So we know um, in the beginning, before all time, was the Word, Christ. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God Himself. He was present originally with God. All things we made, I'm sorry, all things were made and came into existence there and through Him. And without Him was not even one thing made that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines on in the darkness, for the darkness has never overpowered it, put it out, or absorbed it or appropriated it and is unreceptive to it there came a man sent from God whose name was John this man came to witness that he might testify of the light that all men might believe in it adhere to trust it and rely upon it through him he was not the light himself but came that the that he might bear witness regarding the light there it was, the true light was then uh, coming into the world, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light that illumin the illumines every person. He came into the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him, did not know him. He came to that which belonged to him, to his own, his domain, creation, things, world, and they who, I'm sorry, and they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. But to, to as but to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the authority, power, privilege, right to become the children of God, that is, to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name, who owe their birth neither to bloods nor to the will of the flesh, that of physical impulse, nor to the will of man, that of the natural father, but to God. They are all are born of God. And the word Christ became flesh, human incarnate, and tabernacle fixed his tent of flesh, lived a while among us. And we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as in as an only begotten son receives from his father, full of grace, favor, loving kindness, and truth. And I want to stop right there because I, I, I hear a lot of people um, say that you know in this uh, different aspects of the gospel from Matthew Mark Luke and John Jesus never said this or Jesus never pointed out this sin or said that we shouldn't do this and blah blah but what we as believers sometimes forget that if some are believers or not is that Jesus is the word from Genesis to Revelation he is we always talking about the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega, the Morning Star. We talk about all these things that He is, even when when it comes to God, uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. You know, you have those different names that uh, 
that pretty much tells us who God is in our lives and what he has done. The same thing applies to Jesus. He was here in the beginning. He was there when um, God said, let us uh, make man out, um, out of our own image. He was um, there when Abraham uh, had visitors that told him he would have a child um, that would um, be the seed that comes from Sarah and how Sarah laughed. And he asked uh, Abraham, oh, why did she laugh? You know, so Jesus has always been there. And as I'm reading the book of John and I'm studying, I'm getting into it, I'm, I'm trying to get an understanding of what it, why God has pointed me out of all the Gospels to the book of John is because Jesus mainly dealt with his the miracles. John was very, very focused on the miracles, the, the, the ministry of Jesus, um, more so than the other books um, in the Bible. So when Isaiah prophesied in 45 that... Um, Jesus became flesh, the Christ, um, the one that is sent, that will be sent to save us. Um, when he prophesied that, um, John is reminded of the scriptures of, of what was to come, what was to, to take place, what was to transfer, uh, transpire when he came on this earth. And so in verse 15, John testified about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has priority over me for he was before me he takes rank above me for he existed before I did he has advanced before me because he is my chief and it's amazing you know John doesn't start um, the book of John doesn't start on Jesus birth but in Matthew it definitely talks about his birth and it definitely talks about how Mary uh, went to go visit Elizabeth and how when Mary came into Elizabeth's presence how John uh, leaped into her womb meaning basically that whatever God has anointed and appointed John to be it did not become until Jesus was um, nearby him. So it's amazing how the Holy Spirit um, guides us and gives us the strength and, and, and speaks through us uh, that only God uh, is only revealing to those who would adhere to and listen and take in uh, what the Word of God is saying. So just imagine John in the wilderness. You know, a lot of people hearing this man, I'm sure he was a very awesome speaker, but he definitely made sure, you know, that no one assumed and took on that he was the Messiah you know he was even prophesied uh, as well about how he would dress and how he would live and what he would eat so John the Baptist is now preparing the way for Jesus Christ he's the bigger cousin um, and by his cousin being born uh, in, a, in a way that was uh, nothing but God uh, no man touching her his mother uh, was able to give birth in her old age um, by Zechariah, you know, even Zechariah kind of doubted um, God, even when the angel told him what would happen, and so God took his speech. Um, so it, it's just amazing how God does things, and how he sets things up, and how he uh, says things, and we have to take him at his word, because whatever he speaks, whatever he has shown you, you definitely got to trust that it's going to take place, and it's going to happen in your life. Um, verse 16, for out of his fullness abundance, we have all received, all had a share, and we were all supplied with one grace after another, and spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, and even favor upon favor, and gift heap upon gift. And, and that's what we have to look at, the joy that we have in Christ, that when we receive salvation, when we receive the, the, the redemption, the um, justification, sanctification, everything that comes to us, when we confess and believe with our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord and He died and He was raised on the third day, then we take on um, His likeness. We definitely take on what He has called us to do, which is to definitely become disciples. Because right now He hasn't even had, He doesn't have any disciples. He's right now He's just um, being just doing what the what the father tells him to do and a lot of times you and i don't want to get before, uh, ahead of myself that if you just be uh, obedient to god he's he will be with you as always he will always direct your path he was always cover and hide you from the snares of the enemy that's why we have to stay in line with god john the baptist had a mission if his mission was only to just speak truth and speak uh, of his coming then god will glorify or get the glory out of it because of his obedience and even though he lost his life but he gained another one with christ you hear what i'm saying so that's i think a lot of people get afraid about losing their lives 
um, because of what we believe in. You know, you have different places in 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 in, in, a, in United not United States, but in in the world where they kill Christians because they believe in Christianity, believe in Jesus Christ, and they don't believe in that their Allah. They don't believe in Muhammad. So we're very very. We're very, very grateful, and we should be very grateful that we don't have that here in the United States, that we're able to freely um, serve and worship who we desire to worship without being killed for it. Um, so in verse 17 it says, For while the law was given through Moses, grace unheard, unearned, undeserved favor and spiritual blessings, and truth came through Jesus Christ. No man has ever seen God at any time, the only unique Son or the only begotten Son, um, I'm sorry, the only begotten God, who is in the bosom, in the intimate presence of the Father. He has declared Him, He has revealed Him and brought Him out where He can uh, be seen. He has interpreted Him and He has made Him known. Verse 19, and this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites to him from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? Are we to the point where people are, are intrigued by our life, our, our the way we live, the way we speak, the way we care ourselves? Are people want to question who you are and who you, do you represent? Are we showing them Christ? Are we showing them the light? Or are we showing them our flesh and our and yes, we fall, we make mistakes, but we have to overcome those mistakes. And the only way we, think we can overcome if we surrender all to Jesus. If we surrender all to Him, He can take on that burden, He can take on that yoke, and, 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 and allow us to be free uh, from the bondage of our mistakes. Because a lot of times we don't realize that that mistake that we make can become our bondage. So where we think that we cannot be used by God, we cannot uh, do what He has called us to do because we feel that we're not worthy. No, we're not worthy, but He still can use you if you put your trust in Him and if you also actually and, and definitely with all your heart believe and repent and turn away from the wrongdoing that you've committed against your Father which is in heaven. And so um, in verse 20, He confessed, admitted the truth and did not try to conceal it but acknowledge I am not the Christ. A lot of us, when we get to that point where we have prestigious people, people that are in high places, um, let's say, we'll just say the president, because that's what's considered as the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the, and the Sahedrins, and Caiaphas, and all them, the high priests. They're considered in that kind of status. So when you have, you know, those type of people coming and asking you questions, are we saying that we are not the ones that you should be looking at, but to whom we serve, which is Jesus Christ? Or are we t taking on the glory, which is due to Him and not to ourselves? Are we redirecting people to Him, or are we trying to show off what we can do? Because without Him, we won't be able to do what we can do. So John, was sm he definitely was smart, and he definitely had the Holy Spirit to answer these people that, no, I am not the Christ. Verse 21, they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he said, no. A lot of times we have a lot of people that want this position, that uh, put this, you know, this lettering or this title in front of their names because they want to be well known. Whatever happened to just being a servant of God? Just be a servant and just use your gift when you're when you're being led by the Holy Spirit and people will recognize your gift and people will see that you are a prophet. People will see that you're an apostle. People will see that you're a bishop. People will see that you're a teacher, a pastor. You know what I'm saying? People will see that. You don't have to announce wherever you go your title. Even John didn't even announce his title because he's, of course he's a prophet. He's clearing the way for Jesus Christ, but because of his mind and his heart connected to what is more important, which is making the preparing the way for Jesus Christ, he didn't make it about himself, but he made it about the one who was to come. Let's go to verse 22. Then they said to him, Who are you? Tell us so that we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying aloud in the wilderness, the voice of the one shouting in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, level straight out, 
straightened out the path of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. The messengers had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I only baptize in water, with water. Among you there stands one whom you do not recognize, and with whom you are not acquainted, and of whom you know nothing. And that you can find that in Malachi 3 and 1. Do we really want to be that one found, thinking that we have a relationship with God, and we really don't? Because if we had a relationship with God, we're, a we're able to recognize those who also share the relationship that we have with Him. And because we share the relationship that we have in Him, we're one. We're one body in Christ. So if we're one body in Christ, I should not be tearing down my sister or my brother. Um, I should not be tearing down people um, just to make myself feel good. You know what I'm saying? If anything, I'm supposed to love. It's okay to correct, but correct righteously. Correct in love. Let's not, let's get away from calling out everybody's, because that's where I'm coming away from. Calling out folks' sins. We all have sinned. We all have fallen short. But who is there recovering the person that has fallen? Because if we're not going to our brother or our sister, we have lost them. And last time I checked, when God, when Jesus gave the parable about the hundred sheep and how one left, and he left the 99 to go get that one. So are we going to get that one? Or are we only concerned about the 99? So verse 27, it says, It is he who, coming after me, is preferred before me, the string of whose sandal, I am not worthy to unloose. There these things, I'm sorry, these things occurred in Bethany across the Jordan, at the Jordan crossing, where John was then baptizing. Verse 29, the next day John saw Jesus coming to him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And what we have to also understand, because a lot of people question, like, how can John say, this is the Lamb of God, but then yet still send his disciples to make sure he is the one that God has uh, sent um, to save this world. It's because the Holy Spirit re revealed this to John, just like it revealed it to Peter. Just like it even, re re I'm sorry, even revealed to Caiaphas when he said was basically prophesying about Jesus' death. And we're going to get into that. I think that's in chapter 11 or 12 uh, in John. So he knew he allowed the Holy Spirit to, to speak through him. And that's how he was able to give this revelation. In verse 30, this is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who priority over me, who takes uh, rank above me because he was before me and existed before I did. Verse 31, and I did not know him and I did not recognize him myself. But it is in order that he, he should be made manifest and be revealed to Israel. He brought out where we can see him. Then I came baptizing in with water. John gave further evidence saying, I have seen the spirit descending as a dove out of heaven. And it dwelt on him never to depart. Understand this. We have to understand in the Old Testament when prophets were speaking on behalf of God and he was speaking to God's people the Holy Spirit did come in and used him and then he left here John sees the Holy Spirit falling on Jesus Christ and dwelling in him and not leaving him and here is when Jesus ministry this is when he's ready to be used by the Father to go about and doing what God has called him to do this is very, this this verse is very 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 important. I need y'all to understand verse thirty two. By John seeing us, and this is just a something that he described as a dove. It wasn't literally a, a dove, but that's how the Holy Spirit looked to him when he he fell on Jesus Christ and remained in Jesus. And I did not know him nor recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in with water, said to me, Upon him whom you shall see the Spirit descend and remain that one is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And we also have to understand the reason why God is telling John this at the same time showing him who Jesus is is because without the Holy Spirit we are nothing. Without the Holy Spirit Jesus couldn't perform any type of miracles. He couldn't speak on behalf of, of God. He couldn't do the things that he was doing without the Holy Spirit. 
we cannot do anything. Anytime that we allow ourselves to think that we've done it, then we have missed the mark. So always remember that the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the direction to tell us what to say. Because it's not by our own intellect. I don't care what kind of degree you done got in, uh, in theological schools or theologians or whatever. If you call yourself a theologian or what have you. But if it wasn't for the, 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 the Holy Spirit of God descending on you, you wouldn't know what you know now. You'd actually be walking around crazy, mad, uh, not understanding or not knowing who you are. Not, You know what I'm saying? Because that's how it happened with Nebuchadnezzar. He got so high in his position that God had to bring him down. So don't get to the point where God has to bring you down. Amen. In verse 34, and I have seen that happen. I actually did see it and my testimony is that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day John was standing with two of his disciples and he looked at Jesus and he walked along and said, look, there is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him and say this and they followed him. But Jesus turned, and as he saw them following him, he said to them, What are you looking for, and what is is you wish? And they answered him, Rabbi, which translated as teacher, or is teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was then about the tenth hour, about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard what John said and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first sought out and found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found, discovered the Messiah, which translated it is the Christ, the Anointed One. Now, how did they know this? Once again, it's amazing what the Holy Spirit does, how it reveals things to us. You can never go wrong by trusting in the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to use you. I understand some people that are pastors and ministers, you rely on that piece of paper and Google uh, to give you a better sermon or trying to hype up the people or go so deep into the Word to where some people don't even understand what you're talking about. But if you just allow the Holy Spirit to move through you to be used by the Holy Spirit, a lot of people can be saved. A lot of chains can be broken. A lot of people can be set free and delivered. So allow the Holy Spirit to use you. Even when you think it's, the, it's Satan coming in, sometimes it's God allowing it to happen so that door can close because you, didn't, you don't need to be walking through that door. So we've got to take and understand and always pray and ask God His will. Always. Verse 42. Andrew then led, brought Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which translated is Peter, which means stone. The next day Jesus desired and decided to go into Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Join me as my attendant and follow me. And we know at towards the end of this book where Jesus talks about how he, God gave him uh, his disciples, and, and not one did he lose except the one uh, which belonged to the devil in the first place, which is we all know um, who that was. Um, let's see here. And so in verse 44, now Philip was from Bethsa of the same city as Andrew and Peter. Philip saw and found Nathanael and told him, We have found, discovered the one Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about Jesus from Nazareth, the legal son of Joseph. And this is what we need to also understand, that the Holy Spirit revealed. And if, if Jesus is saying that you, this is who you gave me, of course the Holy Spirit had to reveal to them who he was. And immediately they understood that this was the Messiah. This is the one that Moses talked about. This is the one that David talked about. Um, so they already, that's why Christ knew that they belonged to him. Because the Holy Spirit revealed to him. And the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in something that's evil. The Holy Spirit cannot go and manifest in something that is evil. So these people were chosen. These disciples were chosen, handpicked by God. And, and Jesus was able to know that they were, were supposed to be with him uh, because they were able to all automatically know that he is the Messiah that they longed for and that they waited for. Um, verse 47, uh, Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him and said concerning him, See, here is an Israelite, indeed a true descendant of Jacob, in whom there is no guile, nor deceit, nor falsehood, nor duplicity. Verse 48, Nathanael said to Jesus, How do you know me? How is it that you know these things about me? Jesus answered him, Before ever Philip called you, when you were still under the fig tree, I saw you. 
Nathaniel answered, Teacher, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Once again, this is the Holy Spirit revealing to Jesus, who are his disciples. Jesus replied, Because I said to you, I saw you beneath the fig tree. Do you believe in and rely on and trust in me? You shall see greater things than this. Then he said to him, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of, of, of Man. So this is chapter 1. I pray that you all have been blessed. Um, and like I said, we'll be going from chapter to chapter uh, in the book of John. Uh, I'm looking forward to what God is going to say and what he's going to speak on this channel. Um, with um, all of me, with all that he's given me, the knowledge to understand the wisdom of his word. Stay in your word, people. Please stay in your word. Read your Bible. Pray before you read and ask God for, you know, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of his word. Because you can never go wrong when you just ask God. That's why Jesus said you ask. That's all you have to do. Knock, seek, and you shall find. And the door will be open to you. God will definitely do those things in order to receive what he has for you. I don't want people to be hindered from what God has for them because of uh, lack of knowledge. Even in, in, in education, you know, knowledge is power. This knowledge is power. Um, I, I just thank God uh, for using me, for allowing me to be a light in the midst of darkness. I just pray and, and trust God. I went to a conference last week and I will never be the same again. Um, always keep each other lifted up in prayer. Even when someone has fallen, uh, definitely keep them lifted up in prayer because it could be you. And never say something that you would never do. I thank you so much for your patience on waiting on me to record again. I thank you so much for your prayers, the emails that I've get, gotten um, saying that they've been keeping me in prayer. So I appreciate that. I love you guys with all my heart. I'm always praying for you guys. Always walk in what God has called you to walk in and never settle. I, I pray that you... Uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not already for the new subscribers thank you so much for even stopping by my channel to watch my videos um i, I really really appreciate it i love you guys with all my heart take care be blessed make sure that you are following me i have a facebook account now yay make sure you type in april kane c-a-i-n dash ross r-o-s-s um i have a facebook page um make sure you follow me on twitter on the gospel truth with the number two behind it on Instagram, the Gospel Truth with the number two behind it. On Pinterest, that's the same thing. And Tumblr. May God bless you. May God keep you. It's my prayer. Have a blessed week. Goodbye.